Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at Blast Overtime. What an amazing day of games we've had today. We all got smoked on predictions, except for Moses, <laughs> but you know he was phoning them in anyway. Either way, we've got another day with more complexity interviews. We've got Rush up first, and then we've got uh, Shot Styles powered by our CS Money segment here with the Skim and Tory Master himself, Connor, and then we'll have Jason Lake to come on and give us his emotional reactions live in front of the camera. You won't have to watch him on a replay. Stay tuned to Blast Overtime. Yes, thank you so much, you guys, for your time and attention today. I wore a strawless red and it didn't work out, but Connor wore complexity blue and things went a little bit better. Hey, Rush, how you doing, man? I'm great now that I'm with you guys. With some yeah. wine. It's great. Yeah, life's good, right? Oh, yeah. Just a couple wins, you know, one over Vitality, one over on Strawless. Yeah, dude, I have a question. The very first question is you now qualify to the Spring Showdown, you top the group of death. But which win feels better? You do it, you do this vi versus Vitality, but, and you, you qualify, but yesterday you beat a Strawless. It's an empty best of three without the rest of the wins, but you beat a Strawless. I mean, this is a given. It's a Strawless, honestly. It's like, a Strawless, that was, like, yeah. That first big win for us that like, kind of got us past, not past, but like a little bit past the memes, you know? Uh -huh. Which I think we've kind of embraced at this point. It's not like that much of a meme anymore because we are a juggernaut, maybe. Yeah. But I think, generally speaking, Astralis was like a huge win because they're number one in the world. And it wasn't like it was like a close three maps. It was like on Dust 2, we should have won 16 7 or 16 8. It was like in our favor the whole time, pretty mm -hmm. much. And then a Vertigo, that was a, a more close match. But I think overall, like, no one expected us to play Vertigo either because we have no maps. We always, we always uh, veto it first. But now that people know we play it, it might be different. But yeah. Dude, I, I want to know, like, I want to unpack this a little bit further with you, because we talked to Config about his perspective on what it's like to beat Astralis and just, like, how jovial you guys were after the match. But, like, can you set this up for people who are semi-pro, who are lower-tier pro, who are pro, like, even higher-tier pros, teams that have never beaten Astralis in a best <laughs> of three? Like, how big of a prize is this? Like, how, 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 how big of a marked achievement is this for a team you know, because they're number one ranked. I might sound a little like egotistical, but like I feel like for me it was a big win for this team. But it wasn't like I've done it before versus Astralis and other teams, so like, I knew what it felt like. Mm -hmm. But then I kind of fed off my teammates' reactions because there's a lot of there's a lot of rookies on my team. So when they got like really hyped, that's kind of when I got hyped. Like if you watch the reactions, you can see like I got up and like nice boys, and then they're like cheering us. So I'm like ah fuck it, I'm gonna cheer too. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, I kind of fed off their their energy, but I, I can say like the first time I beat him, maybe it was like I don't know a long time ago, and I'll say E League with Optic, beat him in the finals, like. That was like massive, like I, like flowing emotions. Like you, you think to yourself, like I finally did it. Like it beat like one of the best teams in the world in like the biggest stage, you know. Yeah. So like it's definitely a feeling that I'm chasing still to this day, and maybe I got a little bit in the, yesterday and today, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and Vitality are no slouches, and they played well in their opening match, and that's why you played them today. Yeah. But to get to the the technical achievement here that a lot of people aren't aren't aware of is the fact that you also took Inferno versus them. A map that, like, regardless of the matchup itself, you guys haven't played against each other, but, like, the Vitality are good on Inferno. You guys are coming off of a loss streak on Inferno, right? Like, mm -hmm. online it, matches. Yeah, can you, it's just <laughs> yeah. online matches. Is uh, that what it is? I think we are land players, but obviously it's like we are riding a little bit of a high. Like, we're definitely, like, we're all confident, we're all talking. Like, like the communication is insane. Like, I, I feel like it's like the difference between how it's been, like, sometimes and how it is now is, like, night or day. Mm. And I think if we continue this route, we're going to be, like, one of the most insane teams in the world. So yeah, I'm loving it right now with the communication, and I think everyone's just confident. If we keep down this road, we're gonna be like I said, top five probably. Okay, yeah. Let in me, time, catch, in let time. me catch you on a high. Where where uh, does it stop? Where does the like? Let me catch you at your most. Like your the endorphins are going. Like yeah, you're yeah. gonna say something really dumb here. How how good <laughs> are you guys gonna get? What is the achievement that you can get? I'll be realistic. I'll say by the end of this year, we'll probably be top. I don't want to give myself too much. Do it, bro. You <laughs> just beat Astralis and Vitality. Let the wine flow, Rush. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll be in the playoffs of a major, hopefully. By the end playoffs of the year. and a major. By the end of this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, love that. I know it sounds like a low goal, yeah. but I think that to build like a really good team, a, a dynasty of a team, you have you need time. And we've only had three months together. And I think yeah. that having these results in three months is, is great, but we have to like continue down this path and not get complacent with just a couple wins at blast. You know, we have to just continue grinding like we are. Like Ben is like one of the hardest workers, blame F, one of the hardest workers I've ever played with by far. Wow. And like it, in the same place. it rubs off on everyone. Like everyone wants to like go to that level that he's at and it really helps to make this like, I don't know, this mentality that we're here to win, here to try hard and never give up basically. Yeah, now you, you've got another match to play uh, yeah. just to top off the group, just to smack everybody in the group if possible or another team twice.
but you talk about getting top at a major, top eight at potentially at a major this year. Well, are you even going to qualify to the first one? You have had tr troubles yeah, online. Got to get to the minor first. But, <laughs> but, but this is not something just to tear you down. I want no, to bring up the fact that you guys have played so well at this land. So does that bring in more confidence to when you play your online games? Like, does it change the spirit of the team or the attitude at all? I guess you could say like the previous matches were kind of like those are must wins. You know, like in our heads maybe we were like we have to win these. And here we're like there's low ex expectations for us from the public and from ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're like not expectations, but like we know there's not much pressure. So we just we're playing like lights out. And if we can like replicate that like we do in practice, because in practice we're insane. Just like I feel like these matches are like our practices. Like we're playing like basically we do in practice. And then the matches that we played for the minor qualifiers, we kind of got a little like in our own heads, I think. And that got to us to, to lose. And you're playing best of the ones versus teams that are probably watching all of the demos of you that they can, because this is their one chance to make the major, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's in Europe, so there's tons of good teams. So I think that going forward, we're going to have a better mentality, hopefully. But before, it was definitely like different. And I think that now that we had these wins, we have more confidence. So uh, you've accomplished more in this first weekend of LAN with complexity than you basically did the entire time that the core of Cloud9 was kind of fizzling out, <laughs> right? Yeah. You, you just had an interview recently where you were talking about how it was kind of you, Tim, and uh, Golden that were, were kind of bogged down by Cloud9, and you had to ride that project out for some time. Yeah. Do you think that it was that fresh start, you know, a fresh team that kind of elevated you? Like, did you feel like you were coming into this this weekend and just this project in general as like a new rush? Because it, it kind of hurt to watch you, bro, <laughs> you know, for I a mean, while. Like, I mean, if you're talking statistically, yeah, I mean, I wasn't the best in Cloud9 for yeah. sure, and that's probably why I got like benched in the end. But I think that that team was never meant to be like those, those iterations. Like, we never went for the big one, the big like pickups. We kind of just like, I don't know, pussyfooting pussy pussy yeah, around. We got like the, the small pickups, not bad players, but not players that could bring us to the level that we were at before, yeah. right? From the last iteration, I even said before in an interview that we were planning to go our separate ways, me, Tim, and Golden. And like, Cloud9 didn't like say, force us, like, you're playing because you're contracted. They're just kind of like, you guys, you know, we're going to get you a team and we're going to play. And mm. we're like, Okay, you know, we, we did it because we, we are kinda, in contract. They dragged like, the dream along. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think in the re they realized in the end that maybe that wasn't the best the best choice for them. Yeah. Um, but Jack was a great owner overall the whole time, so. You, awesome. don't, you don't strike me as the confrontational type. Is that, like, was that a symptom of the personalities on the team? That you like, guys when that happened? To, to, I mean, you guys weren't willing to try to take control of the org, or was it too much too much control that the org had? <laughs> well, it wasn't all Cloud9's, Cloud9's fault, because we did try to get players, like for example, like we try to get like Sunny and people from like Ents, so, like we try to get these players that they showed interest, but in the end it didn't like pan out. So that was when, like after that point, that those bios, didn't, or not the bios, but like the players weren't willing to jump ship, you know, with us. Then it's kind of like, what do we do now? Let's go separate ways, and Cloud9's like, we got these players that we can pick up right now, we can make a go of it, and we're like, all right, let's just do it, you know? And we kind of did, and in the end it didn't work out. So I think that, in the end, it's for the best, and I'm not, I have no regrets, so. Go on. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be here right now, probably, if the, like, the, you know, I wouldn't be down this path if that didn't happen, you know, to, like, sit down, have two months on the bench to realize where I'm at now and go from there. You never know where life is going to take you. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of felt like that, you know, what you say about Cloud9 here, where it's like uh, nobody was willing to maybe jump onto the ship that they thought may be yeah. sinking. I think that there was a point where even when Jason was building this new complexity lineup, that there was kind of that conversation too. We, we know that he flaunted, you know, some offers to bigger players mm -hmm. than what was originally pieced together for this of five. Course. And and so when the choices or the teams, that, the players that he, he managed to sign started coming out, like, you know, there was criticism. There was a lot of it. Of course. Um, that's, that's, that's wild to me to think that, you know, same narrative in both situations, but you guys have turned that around. Yep, I mean... In one weekend of land. In one weekend of land. Yeah, I mean, it is like just two matches. They're both of versus great teams, but like we have to replicate it going forward. And like yeah. I said, just there can't be any like signs of like, we can celebrate a little bit, but not much. And there can't be any like complacency because I've been here before with like the Cloud9 team and obviously the major was much bigger than this, mm -hmm. but I know like what it feels like when we get complacent and... I'm gonna, I mean, Ben's gonna make sure it's not gonna happen, and obviously it won't happen, so. Honestly, I, does it all start in the gym? Does that, does that <laughs> help a lot? I haven't worked out in three days, actually. <laughs> Me neither, yeah, so, had a long weekend. I, I wish I could, but like, every day's long, and I'm trying to focus on Counter-Strike only right now, so yeah. even Ben has been in the gym, but I think the gym is definitely healthy for maintaining mental health, is very important, say so. It to the camp, any, say it louder any for gamers the people out in the there, back, yeah, do you have a message for the kids, you go to the gym? definitely work out. And, yeah? Yeah, it's good for your mental health, and yeah, you feel better overall, more confidence, just do it. Nice, yeah. And you get the, the veins, right? The veins is always a bonus. Yeah. Look at those veins. That's how you beat Astralis on land. Yeah, that's how you beat Astralis on land. They're yeah. a little bit too frail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I think they're health conscious too. I, I, they work out 
as well, but maybe not in the sense that me and Ben do, because I think they're more like you know, cardio and like being like just like overall healthy. But I'm just like lift a heavy weight, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I saw that rubbing off on Obo. I was down in the gym myself the other night. It was like, dude, it was like 10:30 at night. I'm in there alone. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's Warden, Blame F, and Obo who roll in. Yeah. You could fit three of him in Blame. <laughs> maybe four. Yeah, maybe four. Yeah. yeah ben weighs like. I don't know, 260 maybe? 260. He's a big man. Yeah, he probably eats an oboe a day in <laughs> weights, right? Yeah. Um, didn't you say he was like a pool noodle or something after you worked out with him? What was that story? Me? Yeah, like you worked out with, with oboe, he did a few squats, and then he walked away like Oh, a yeah, noodle, noodle. noodle, like his arms or his legs felt like noodles because he we did lunges, yeah. and we did like five sets of lunges, and he like couldn't walk basically the yeah. next day. So I'm like, all right, I want to take a break, like a five-day break. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get back to it. Take a week off. It's normal. Yeah. We all do it. I think his legs were sore for like a good four or five days. Four or so. five days, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to put in the work. I mean, he played He played really well. He's doing He's doing yeah. awesome. We're trying to coin the get flattered thing. I don't know if get you guys know Yeah, because that's his last yeah. name, yeah. yeah. Okay. Get flattered. That's like, a good big, one. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. I feel like that's like the, the Counter-Strike <laughs> version of Cracked. We were yelling at like today and before, like, get flattered. It's the name of his deagle, actually, coincidentally enough. Yeah, his name tag on we started coining it recently. Look at this round. So pivotal. That was an oboe catch in the flank. Alex had rotated through CT, yep. Obo had killed him. Alex is like, oh my god, all I had to do was stay alive. And there were all these rounds. Throughout the entire CT side, Vitality had the pistol round that you killed them after, yep. the two 1v3s, RPK and Shocks, and then one good round. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys talk about that? Like the fact that the rounds we lost for those rounds? Yeah. Know? I mean, I think that... We didn't realize until Matt, our, co our manager, a warden, said like after like you guys realized that like you guys did like destroyed them because they won these rounds and then you won 16 six or seven or whatever it was. Yeah. I'm like that's true. Like wow. <laughs> the second round was very important on the CT side. Like I feel like we're really good at converting rounds. So like let's just lose all the pistols and win the second round. Easy. What's your what's your thoughts on the pistol? Because like the pistols in general, you guys won three pistols and Eco the fourth. Yep. So are I mean, you guys? Huge, yeah. Do you guys put a focus on that? Do you guys feel like you got lucky there? What's um, going on? Not necessarily any focus. I think we just. I mean, trying to do the same pistols always, obviously, but like besides yeah. that, like I think we're very focused on the second round too to make sure that we give ourselves the best chance to like, I'm gonna get a deagle pick here, da da da. You know, it's just, you kind of just you want to play together and make sure you give yourself the best shot to win it instead of just going for picks and hoping for the best. Which mm -hmm. sometimes we do that too, but yeah. So it's been it's been kind of a fall from grace for you since Cloud Nine, as with a lot of stories with a lot of America's favorite players. You know what I mean? Like you guys were that team, and now like form is coming back to you guys, results are coming back to you guys. That's that's fantastic. Um, in that time, what do you? What have you learned? What have you learned since the drop off? Now that we're seeing some results again, what are the lessons that you could you could take with you if you could give it to Rush again? If you could roll back to a year or two and go <laughs> back to Rush just before the the tragic drop off yeah, yeah. after Cloud Nine ends up uh, dissipating, what is what would you tell old Rush? I guess it's like patience and hard work pays off. I guess like it's the best thing I can say because even though like we have been working hard like 10, 12 hour days sometimes for like. Three four months, even from the old roster, like with uh, Def and Shazam, we were playing like 10 11 hours a day, mm -hmm. and it showed because we we were we went to Atlanta after six, six, being a team for six days, and we almost beat EG in a best of three when they were at the peak, right? So it shows that like this hard work pays off, and we had a boot, month long boot camp in Copenhagen. I stayed in a uh, Airbnb with uh, Obo for a month in Copenhagen yeah. to boot camp, and that boot camp was honestly terrible, but we got we got past it, and like we got past like those bad those bad uh, patches, you know? Yeah. And as long as you come out in a better like mindset after that, then you're gonna become a better team. But if you let that eat away at you and like you know devour you, then you're not going to become a good team. So I yeah. think having those bad knocks, like even these minor like qualifier losses, helped us a lot to get like a better mental like fortitude overall. So you're looking a little pasty there, Rush. I'm pretty white. Not seeing a lot of tattoos going on. Yeah. We had config on yesterday. He just got a big piece on his. I think I was white, but I'm also pretty white. But yeah. Is the, is the culture on the team sh <laughs> like it, the culture on the team right now? Is a bunch of meatheads working out, winning matches on land versus the best teams in the world. And now Config life's starting good. to get tattoos. Well, life's good. <laughs> config starting to get tattoos. Where when's your piece coming? I don't know. I thought about getting a tattoo after the major win. Uh -huh. Like I don't know what I was gonna get, but I decided against it. So maybe when I win my second major with complexity, maybe right. that'd be the time. Oh. And uh, what are the odds of uh, Obo walking onto stage with a couple of sleeves? Oh my uh, gosh. Have to, <laughs> I think his mom might not approve. Maybe right. in two months. Oh, yeah, we still we're still at that point where we need yeah. like maybe uh, when he's mom. 18. Parental supervision. Parental yeah. supervision. And yeah. he has like he can make his choices on, on his own. Maybe he'll do it. But, okay. Yeah. She doesn't have to sign off on anything for him to play his stuff, right? Uh, not to play, but like to travel. There has to be like a guardian thing that Matt or me carries. Like when I traveled with him alone to back from Copenhagen, like I'd have a guardian thing. Yeah. Because he's 16, you know. But hey, some some more insight here. You you talk about like traveling with or staying with Obo. Yeah. Do you guys always stay in the same pairs when you're like uh, staying in rooms, mm -hmm. or is it? Do you guys have like uh, no, we haven't rooms together. We haven't traveled that much together yet, so it's kind of like hard to say. But like here, I was with Christian. Uh, config and then I went. We have solo rooms because Blast is, you know, awesome. They give you solo rooms. So yeah, that's nice. But um, besides that, like we have no set, no roommates yet. Okay. 
Does that kill the mood on the team if somebody you, you hang out with someone who like tur tosses and turns too much or uh, snoring's a problem? Sleep? Snoring's a problem. I, I will say. Do you want to name any names, man? We can get crazy <coughs> here. <coughs> no, like, <laughs> like I literally had to put in like earbuds and a Bose headset over it. Oh my just, gosh! Like, but I will say I slept pretty soundly when I had that like contraptions going. You know, but like, besides that, if I had slept without that on, I would be screwed. Okay, well if you're a side sleeper, be warned. Don't 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 hang yeah. out with config yeah. too much. <laughs> Um, I think, uh, okay, so I think now we're going to take it into our next segment. All right. It's called the CS Money Shot Style segment. Shot Style is powered by CS Money. We want to thank them for being a part of this show, and uh, their segment is coming right up right after this. Boom. You're actually going to be the inaugural player to hang out and actually yeah. talk about some of these skins. There it is. How much do you care about skins, Rush? What's it? Do you? I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't give any. I, I don't give a shh. Yeah. 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 Okay. I know. I knew the next yeah. letter that was coming after that. I did, definitely don't care. I right. uh, I have like some nice like skins, but I, like I use a default AK. Yeah. With, I scrape the complexity sticker, so it's like. Just the star, where it looks yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, like a liege. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, yeah. I've, I put my teammate sticker sometimes on my guns. Okay. Like, the guns they're good with. Hype them up. Yeah, like, I put, like, a po I'll put, like, when we get to a major eventually. Yeah. I'll put poisons on the op, for example. Okay. And maybe, like, conflict with the AK, stuff like that. All right. right. So that's, that's uh, Rush's way of showing love. Then yeah. I'm going to take control of this one, and we're going to go look ahead at uh, Zaiwu's inventory, first and foremost. Maybe okay. I'll get your thoughts at the end of this, right? Why is there We've been talking again? color that's schemes all weekend long, so another young player launders, just like Obo yesterday, who's rocking that classic knife. They give a throwback to where Counter-Strike came from, and he hits it with the fade. So he was born on the day that Counter-Strike was oh made. God. He's a legend. Are we sure he's human? <laughs> he's a legend. He may have been made in a lab. Who knows? Bloodsport MP7, Bloodsport AK-47. That's an obvious mix. You know, we're going with the red, white, and black. And then the Hellfire M4, you can see how that couples there, too. So we've got a lot of that classic red and black. It's a repeating theme when it comes to Counter-Strike. And it's yeah. nice to see how uh, some players, you know, have variations of it. There's a lot of, um... How much say, vitality colors in there besides maybe no. the, the M4 Silence? Yeah, the I'm surprised. Oh, Spire. Yeah. Uh, and a Lionfish M249 because everybody knows that LMGs pack a punch. Is there still room in the meta for the LMGs? I mean, we played a skimmers look at once when we first started making this team. We got like 26 Ford on Inferno because <laughs> Stu and uh, Twist had M249s and they're just spraying down banana with it. Yeah. Or like, I messaged Naf like, what are you doing? What are you man? doing? Like, man? This is good prac, right? He's like, sorry, man, my, my, my bad. And then, yeah, the rest is history. I guess we beat him in scrims after that before, so felt good. Okay. All right. Well, so but it's like, it's a back and forth with them. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And before we take a look at the next skins, Rush, I want to thank you. I yep. want to cheers you. First of all. Cheers, boys. All right, we're going to finish, man. That's three way here. 4 0 group. Should I chug this? And that is just it. delicious. Ah. The complexity blue comes through. Rush, congratulations on the victory versus Thanks, Vitality. We'll see you tomorrow for another chance at uh, topping off the group of death and making history day after day. Three days in a row, maybe. Let's, let's get that cash. Yeah, let's get that cash. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming on, Rush. No worries. It was great to have you on as a guest. And uh, now we're going to take a look at our second inventory set. Number two. That which is? Be simple. Simple. Oh, man, he was on fire today. I mean, and you just saw it, not only in the server, but uh, sitting next to his teammates. They were pumped. He had the energy. It was all flowing. And maybe, just maybe, it had something to do with this skin set. He's one of the only players that I've noticed who actually goes with the blue and pink neon. It's very flashy, just like him. The sports gloves vice is where everything starts. He actually was playing that Decimator Tech 9. Haven't seen a Tech 9 in a while, but Simple's been cracking it out, so who knows where he takes it. The butterfly fade couples nicely with the gloves. We've all come to appreciate the fade and the spinning of the butterfly, but what draws my eye immediately, okay. ooh, you know, forgive me if I slaughter this, but the Gungnir AWP. Yeah. It's a part of the new Norse collection. And uh, I've actually seen Device Rock in this one too, I believe. But, uh, you know, one of these beautiful new additions with our beloved Counter Strike Agent skins. It was a part of uh, the uh, Shattered Web operation. And it's a hot drop, you know. And personally, could be the new Dragon Lore. I think uh, Jason's Jason's sitting us sitting beside yeah. us, and he's taken aback by how much you care about these skins. You know I, what a lot I'm more about it than I do. My son Jordan yeah. probably could rattle off all those because he's always asking me to buy a new knife and, right. and a new skin. So your your son, uh, how old is he? Thirteen? Is he? Uh, 13? He's almost fourteen. Almost yeah. fourteen years old. Yeah. How many hours in CS:GO does he have? Too many. Too yeah. many. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell mom. He's he's a great player. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, are you gonna put him into the team as soon as he's ready, or what's? You know, on? we'll see. I think he's gonna be a pro gamer. Yeah. 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 Does, he, does he carry the same passion that you have? Like, 
It, it honestly, he, he's it more can't... reserved like his, his mom, my, my wife. But okay. um, I think I'm starting to rub off on him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. I'm fighting a cold and jet lag, and I lost my voice. So. Yeah, we saw you, man. We were cheering with you. Yeah, yeah. thanks. No, there's definitely there's, there's something fun, going wrong. But yo, fun you, night. your passion keeps us alive, too, uh, when we're casting. We look over, and <laughs> honestly, when we see you sad or excited, I mean, it's just, it's emotional. Yeah, I wanted right? to strangle you guys a couple times, because yeah. you're like, there's just no way Vitality can come back now. You know, the, the <laughs> yeah. classic yeah, 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 caster yeah. curse, right. I'm like, stop, <laughs> yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. You're jinxing us. Oh, I no, thought he was checking out your suit. That's it what was a fun night, were. dude. That's a fly suit. Oh, thank I you so you much. Why. Yes, uh, I didn't. I didn't spend too much money on it, thankfully. But uh, yeah, I got definitely got bang for my buck here. It's a, it's a nice one. Jason, on this team, you're seeing so many successes in a row. Does it only make you more scared? Or are you just excited? Are you just are you just reveling in the fact that now you've got a land to look forward to locked up? What what's a, what, um, what are you feeling? Yeah, I, I just want everyone to keep in mind. You know, this is a new team. And it's a very young team. We have one of the youngest rosters in you know, the top tier of, of Counter-Strike. So what's exciting is we're nowhere near our ceiling. This team can get a lot better, um, but it's going to make mistakes from time to time. It's going to stumble. It's gonna lose games it shouldn't have because it takes time to get teamwork. You know, it takes time to get that chemistry. You look at, at Mouse Sports and the, the EG Core and some of these teams, like they had to pay their dues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really and they largely just flew surprised under the radar for a long time. Yeah. yeah, I mean just our goal here was to get top 2 um, but the way they've played is has been something man. Yeah. It, it's yeah. been fun to watch and uh, I'm really proud of them but the most important thing is they keep grounded because now all of the top teams are going to be like, wait a minute, now we got to pay attention to these guys and they're going to break down our demos and they're going to anti-strat and everything else. So it will continue to get harder, but I'm pretty bullish on this roster. I think, uh, I think we have something special. Yeah, hey, I think it'd be a fool not to be. It's pure stonks right now. But with complexity uh, as it is, do you, like, it seems like all of the players are actually painfully mature almost at the fact that they realize, you know, how good they actually are considering their land results. Is there a point where you kind of want them to just believe in it and then you you, you to be the one that worries? Or do, <laughs> are you glad that they kind of have a they're, realistic uh, understanding of where they're at? There's something special. And uh, I encourage, you know, the Counter-Strike diehards on, on Reddit and HLTV that that are cynical at times to just um, come on this journey with us and believe for a minute, you know, that special things are possible. We're gonna screw up, we're, we're gonna lose games we shouldn't, but I promise you one thing, we're gonna be a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Mm. Everyone back home in the Complexity headquarters, you know, they, they had, on our Instagram yesterday, they had this video of that. everyone exploding in the player lounge when we won, and, and I saw it this morning, it brought tears to my eyes because everybody in our organization is so passionate about what we do. Mm -hmm. And we work so hard. And, you know, esports as in life is a series of ups and downs. You never want to get too high when you're up and too low when you're down. But when you've been down for a while, man, yeah, where's it's down hard right? to yeah. get up. Right. And, and you got to fight and you got to claw and you got to cry and you got to battle and that's what the people in my company do that's what complexity is about we're about passion and gaming um this was a special special week for us thanks very much to blast for having us um and uh we're complexity i hope everyone's ready for 2020. jason i yeah. think people are very happy to see you guys winning you know you've got a long time long history of fans a lot of matches to look back on videos on youtube that grow old, but don't <laughs> lose their value. You know? Laugh at the silly old guy that gets excited about Counter-Strike. You know, yeah. it, it's funny, my kids make fun of me because I watch at home the same way. And my daughter will like Snapchat and Instagram me because they think it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's not an act, that's just how, when I care so deeply about something, that's just how I am. I mean, and if this man's faking it, give him an Oscar. Right. You know I mean? <laughs> so you're doing it, It's a job. little embarrassing, but if you worry no. too much about what people think, you know. That's exactly it. You, you say you say laugh at the man who gets excited. I, I would argue I've been inspired by the man who gets oh, excited. Oh, that's very kind. Thanks. I remember when I was learning CS and going back and kind of deep diving into the history, you know, and coming across this and not realizing that it had already existed for 10 years and that your passion specifically had existed yeah. all of that time and to this date still does, man. So yeah. uh, I appreciate I, that. That's I've never very laughed. kind. And you yeah. know what, though? I, I get way too much credit um, for when we have accomplishments. It's the people behind the scenes 
um, that really get things done. And then you put the face guy out there, and, and, that, and that's me, you know? A guy like Travis Goff back in Dallas who believed in us and brought us to Dallas with the Jones and Goff families because he grew up a Counter-Strike fan, mm. and he's like, I want to invest in complexity. Without that guy, I'm not sitting here. You know, I could list endless people that work and toil for us late into the night, day after day after day, to make something special, to build something memorable. We're trying to build a billion dollar multi-generational sports property, and we're hell bent on doing it. Let's talk about that for a second. I mean, we are here at Blast. I've been at every single Blast so far. Complexity have not been on the radar for Blast, but for Blast picking teams, they wanted to pick teams that they believe had the right infrastructure, a guy at the helm that they could believe in, a team that they saw potential in, and Complexity met that criteria. Now you're here at this land, at the debut of the Spring Series, and you guys show up and shine. What can you say about your experience at Blast and the, and the opportunity <laughs> I, I'm itself? so excited to be here. And you know, thank you to Nicholas and everyone at Blast for for believing in, in complexity. Um, when you're trying to build a property that's gonna last hopefully 10 years or longer, you can't just look at the immediate roster because in two years, it could all be topsy-turvy. Cloud nine. You wanna select good partners you know, that are like-minded, that have stability, and you're looking almost more in a business angle because rosters can change pretty quick. Of course, yeah. So I really appreciate them believing in us. I know they took a lot of flack for it, as did ESL. and. Uh, all I can say is thank you, and, and I, I hope our performance here shows that you know we're not fooling around. We want to be the best counter-strike team in the world. The guys are going straight back to the hotel to prepare for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. People will say, oh, it's just gravy. You're already going to Moscow. No, we want to win every match every time we sit down and play. We want to win every scrim and get better every single day. That's how we operate, and that's how we're going to continue to operate. And uh, I just feel incredibly, incredibly blessed to be on this journey with such amazing people. Um, like I said, uh, they do all the work and I get all the credit, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just like a, a moment to be emotional. This is something that like, you could easily characterize one of the greatest upsets that we've ever seen. It's in the top five um, I, that I can remember in four years of casting CSGO, along with all of the other matches that I've watched myself. And there's just, there's, there's no belittling it, even <laughs> in the matches that you watch themselves as an analyst, as an analytical type that is looking to tear down every moment. You could see that this was no fluke. You know, this is a, a team that played well, and there were rounds where you, this is not a complexity I've seen before. This is, this is something I didn't realize Blame F was capable of calling. Yeah. There was so much stuff here that would have me believe that there's a future to this organization. It, it, it goes to all five of the players. It goes to Matt, the manager. You know, it goes to Jamie, the coach. It goes to Ricky, our, our sports psychologist. Um, but you really have to point out Blame F. Um, I work really hard. Everyone in my company works really hard, and he outworks us all, I think. I've never in my career seen a gamer work harder and just want it more. Like, I told him when we got together, I flew to Copenhagen to recruit him, and we were sitting in a hotel, and I told him, I believe if you stay humble and you keep this work ethic up, you're going to be one of the greatest in-game leaders in Counter-Strike history. And I said, you want to do it with me? He said, let's do it. Who's coming with me? So, yeah. He's making me look really smart, but he's the one doing all the work. And alongside his teammates, you know, like I said, sometimes you go from like zero to hero so quick or vice versa. And the community's like, oh, you're so great or you're so terrible. When, and the reality is somewhere in the middle. We're, we're going to lose some games, so, you know. Speaking this was that. great right now, but I just want to set expectations for our fans. Like, I think we're going to do some really cool stuff, but it's still really early in the game. So anybody that wants to be a complexity fan, you know. Now's the time. We'd be honored to have you. Don't you don't want to be a bandwagon complexity fan. I right? welcome all bandwagons. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact come, and before, but you know, early bird complexity. tickets are on sale, right? Come through. ComplexityGaming.com. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, complexity on Twitter. We, now, we talk about like the, the, the better parts of it, but the meat and potatoes is the land. But to get to the lands, we've got to do the qualifiers, and the qualifiers aren't always on land. Yeah, you our best of one online qualifier is just wonderful. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's, that's the nature of the beast, the state of the game. Yeah. And, and, and We have to earn our way. We have to pay our dues. When I built this roster with three-fifths Europeans, I knew there was a chance we might right. miss the Rio Major. 
And it was a conscious decision our organization made. We said, we want to build the best possible team we can right now. And if we miss a major, we miss a major. And I'm already happy about that decision. Like, I really hope we make the major. I really want to go to Brazil and meet the fans down there. They're so passionate. Um, but if we don't, it's a price we were willing to pay mm -hmm. for the long run. You know, this is a long project. Um, I really believe this team could be good for two, three, four years, you know. Look at Astralis and how amazing their run has been and just how dedicated their players are and, and the way they train and the way they work together and their mental fortitude. And, you know, we look at them as an inspiration. This is how you do it right. So let's do it right and let's build a juggernaut for three or four let's years. Let's build a juggernaut. <laughs> a sentiment we echoed. And before we close this out, Jason, I want to give you the camera. This is what you're good at. You're yeah. the charismatic one of the organization. What do you want to say to the fans or people that you could potentially lure in as new fans? Oh, goodness. Um, the one thing I can say to everyone out there is you could choose a lot of different brands. There's a lot of great teams and great orgs. But if you really just want to believe in something that's different, something that's driven by passion, people that genuinely care about everything we do, you know, we'd be really honored to have any fan that wants to come along. I want to tell you a quick story. The first day we played Astralis, they go through the crowd that's here in the auditorium and they say, you know, okay, the complexity fans are going to sit over here. Where are the complexity fans? One dude raised his hand and he came sat by me. And that meant the world to me. There was one dude in a whole auditorium that wasn't, you know, pulling for the perennial champs, Astralis, and they've definitely earned that. Um, but if all I have is one fan that's willing to cheer for me in, in our organization, that's all we need. But we welcome one and welcome all. The passion is infectious. Thank you so much for being on the Thanks show, Thanks so much for having me. We appreciate, appreciate it. Sorry my voice is a little take. shot. Pleasure. You know, from yeah. within the org to seeing the players play, but understanding the people behind it that make it all possible. You're bringing honors to the brand, and I wish you the best of luck in all the results and uh, your upcoming land at, uh, at Blast Moscow. Yeah, I'm excited to go to Moscow. I've never been there. I'm yeah. genuinely excited. And qualify for that minor next weekend. Yes, yeah. try to, yeah, I really hope the they do. I hope they do. Thanks okay. so much. Yes, well, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it from us here on Overtime. Always great. Another show show where we get a second take and a closer look at some of the wonderful matches that we've seen so far at Blast. We're wrapping it up here, but we'll definitely be back again hopefully tomorrow. And make sure to leave us your feedback online. If you want any guests that you'd like to come on, let us know. And that's it for me and Connor. Everybody, good night.